Let's learn about the structure, characteristics, and application cases of GPIO. GPIO is an abbreviation for General Purpose Input Output and refers to a signal pin or port required to perform digital input or output functions of an IC or MCU. It is used for input purposes such as receiving various data or signals, switch input, etc., and for output purposes to drive LED relay buzzer and actuator, etc., and can be defined as input or output in one port. In general MCU, it can be said that most of them are for GPIO pins, except for power and ground pins. Let's take a look at the GPIO structure of STM32. The upper part is an input circuit and can selectively receive analog input and digital input. In the case of analog input, it is directly connected to the analog processing unit inside the MCU from the GPIO pin and is mainly used by connecting to the ADC circuit, which is an analog to digital converter. In the case of digital input, it is connected to the digital processing unit inside the MCU through a Schmidt trigger via a pull-up, pull-down resistor circuit that can define a pull-up or pull-down switch in software. The Schmidt trigger is used to receive a stable logic signal without noise even for a digital signal with some noise. The lower part is an output circuit, in which a digital signal processed in the digital processing section inside the MCU is input to the output control section, which drives a push-pull driver using a combination of P-type and N-type MOSFETs to output a digital signal to the final GPIO port. The diode connected to power and ground on the GPIO port side is a protection diode to protect the inside of the MCU against excessive voltage or surge voltage on the port. In this way, GPIO must be able to perform two roles, input and output, in one port, and the input is structured to receive and process not only digital but also analog signals and the output applies a push-pull driver to stably supply logic high and low to the load. Schmidt triggers are applied to the digital input side of the GPIO circuit inside the IC or MCU. The signal becomes a noisy signal as it passes through the PCB or cable, and in digital ICs. This signal noise is removed to obtain a clean digital signal without noise, so the Schmidt trigger is used. The Schmidt trigger is a circuit whose operating structure is such that in the low to high transition region, logic becomes high when the upper threshold voltage is exceeded. And in the high to low transition region, logic becomes low when the lower threshold voltage is below. This circuit operating characteristic is used to create a noise-free digital waveform. Let's learn about the structure and operation of a push-pull drive used for digital output. Most output circuits of digital ICs or MCUs use a push-pull structure driver composed of P-type and N-type MOSFETs. In other words, in order to apply logic high or low to the load to be driven, the P-type MOSFET is used for high output and the N-type MOSFET is used for low output. This configuration where P-type and N-type MOSFETs are combined is called a push-pull. And the literal meaning of the word is the concept of pushing and pulling current or voltage. Looking at the operating structure, first, when the input is low, the gate source voltage VGS of the upper P-type MOSFET becomes negative, and at the same time, the gate source voltage VGS of the lower N-type MOSFET becomes zero. So the upper P-type MOSFET turns on and the lower N-type MOSFET turns off, and a high is output to the GPIO port. When the input is high, the gate source voltage VGS of the upper P-type MOSFET becomes zero, and at the same time, the gate source voltage VGS of the lower N-type MOSFET becomes positive. So the upper P-type MOSFET turns off and the lower N-type MOSFET turns on and low is output to the GPIO port. In other words, you can see that the polarity is reversed with respect to the input logic and output to the GPIO port.
A circuit that consists of a P-type MOSFET and an N-type MOSFET in a series structure is called CMOS or complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Most MCUs and digital ICs use GPIOs that utilize this CMOS. Let's learn about the structure of open collector and open drain. The open collector is a structure in which the IC port is connected to the collector of the NPN and the signal input goes to the base. When logic high is input, the collector and emitter are turned on and become low, and when low is input, the collector and emitter are turned off and the collector is in a floating state. The floating state is an ambiguous state that is neither 0 nor 1 in digital terms, so it is an unstable state. Therefore, a pull-up resistor must be connected to the collector. When the base is high, the collector is low, so it has an inversion characteristic. Open drain is a structure in which the IC port is connected to the drain of the N-type MOSFET, and a signal input is entered to the gate. When logic high is input, the drain and source are turned on and become low, and when logic low is input, the drain and source are turned off and the drain becomes floating. Therefore, a pull-up resistor must be connected to the drain. When the gate is high, the drain is low, so it has an inversion characteristic. The reason for making the collector and drain on the output side open like this is that when connecting to another IC, there is an advantage in that the logic voltage condition can be freely set to any volt. For example, whether a signal of 3.3 volt logic is connected to 5 volt logic or 1.8 volt logic, it can be easily interfaced by the power voltage connected to the pull-up resistor. Just like a comparator IC, when outputting low or high logic by comparing the input analog signal, if the output structure is an open collector or drain, the IC or MCU connected to the comparator output can easily interface with the pull-up resistor and the power supply voltage applied to the resistor regardless of the logic level of the power condition. Therefore, most comparator outputs have an open collector or drain structure. As explained earlier, open collector and open drain must be connected with pull-up resistors to prevent floating. If you directly connect the input port of the IC with only the power in the switch, it will be recognized as high when the switch is on, but when the switch is off, the IC input port is in a state that is neither 0 nor 1, that is, a floating state. In digital, this floating state causes malfunctions, so it must be designated as either low or high. If the default is high when the switch is turned off, a pull-up resistor is applied. If you want to default low when switching off, apply a pull-down resistor. The pull-up or pull-down resistance applied at this time should be 10 kOhms or more, as applying a lower resistance can result in higher power consumption. Let's learn about the internal structure of the I2C port. I2C consists of two bus lines, clock line SCL and data line SDA, and is a bidirectional communication, so it has a structure that performs two roles with one port. The function of outputting signals within the I2C IC and the function of inputting signals from an external bus line. The output terminal is open drain and the input terminal enters the IC through a digital buffer. Since multiple devices are connected to a single line and the line is pulled up, the default is high, and if the output drain of any one of the connected devices is turned on, the entire line becomes low and is transmitted to all devices simultaneously, creating a multi-input OR structure. Therefore, each connected device can independently output a specific logic signal. In other words, each device can transmit or receive an independent signal on the same line with different timing. Here, the pull-up resistor is applied as standard at 4.7 kilo ohms. Thank you. Bye.